spring my fruit trees. I'm going to be doing the apple trees with spinosad to eliminate the apple sawfly and I'll be spraying the cherry trees with surround to keep the plum curculios off. So yesterday I just did a bunch of maintenance on my tractor, uh, changed the air filter, changed the oil filter, greased up all the joints, and I'm going to be replacing my steering column because I broke it a couple of years ago. I ran into something and I temporarily fixed it. It's lasted about five years, but it's time to get a new entire piece that's on order it should be here tomorrow or saturday i'm going to be getting a new seat too haven't ordered it yet i haven't found the right one that i'm looking for uh, i'm also going to switch out the hydraulic filter and fluid i'm going to change a seal that is leaking underneath um, so this is my sprayer it's kind of a hodgepodge of different things that i've collected um, <clears throat> let's give you a quick, quick, uh, give you a quick overview. That's a 16-gallon tank. <clears throat> Excuse me. It originally was uh, from Northern Supply, Northern Tool. Anyway, it had an electric pump on it that sat here. Well, the surround pretty much destroyed that within two years. So I got a. PTO pump from Tractor Supply right here and did all the hoses for it. I welded up this frame so that it could be hooked to my quick hitch and I kind of botched this up when I made it. I was in a hurry so the welds are crappy. I never bothered painting this part of it. I had to cut this shorter and had to re-weld pieces on here and that's why this is painted down here and this is not um, so yeah the liquid comes in from the bottom of the tank comes up this hose goes into this filter right here from the filter obviously goes into the pump comes back up to this lever that controls whether or not the fluid is going through this hose and out the gun <clears throat> or back into the tank to keep it recirculating and keep the mixtures all in solution because the surround likes to fall to the bottom of the tank so you want to keep it mixed up really good and this is you control how much is getting through the bypass here with this lever it, with this all the way in you get the maximum pressure to the gun I believe and then when you bring it out more is mixing up into the tank but anyway that's it it works pretty good I wish I had a larger tank for it uh, maybe at some point I'll do that but I lost two trees so it, I don't need to spray as much now uh, anyway I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the I'm trying to decide whether I want to do the surround first or the spinosad on the apple trees the apples the apple sawfly will attack the apples very quickly. Um, so usually right after the petals fall off, you want to spray the spinosad. Otherwise, if you get the small apples on the tree, it'll be too late because they'll start tunneling in and doing damage to the apples. So I want to get that on as soon as possible so that they, when, when they start munching down on it, they get sick and die. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the cherries are getting large, so they definitely have to be sprayed with the surround. The surround works by coating the outside of the fruit and the leaves and the branches, and the plum curculio uh, does not like that. Um, it gets in their feet parts and their 
their body or their mouths and stuff and it just irritates them. So they typically will leave the, the tree, the host tree, and go somewhere else. Um, in these parts, I found that this is really the only effective organic solution to the plum curculio. Um, I've tried everything else. I've tried neem oil. I've tried uh, different types of uh, low toxicity insecticides um, like chrysanthemum, uh, the you know, pyrethrums, different things like that, and it really doesn't work. Uh, so anyway, actually I've even collected plum curculios and put them directly into the stream of pyrethrum, and it doesn't kill them. So anyway, we're going to uh, be continuing with the uh, the surround. There is one other thing you can do to get rid of curculios. We used to put a uh, a blanket down around the trees and we'd beat the trees and the plum curculios they fall off into the thing and then you collect them and get rid of them um, but anyway it's just too labor intensive to do that and you don't get all of them and one can lay a hundred eggs one on each fruit so it can quickly damage an entire orchard so this is the spinosad captain jack's dead bug brew concentrate you can use this on all kind of different things, but uh, I just mainly use it on the apple tree for that specific pest. Oh, the apple sawfly, by the way, the surround doesn't bother it. It just chews right through it. The worms do. So, surround doesn't work for everything, unfortunately, but this seems to be quite effective. See that there's some surround still in the bottom of this from last year that I can't quite get rid of. So we're gonna put the spinosad in at the rate of four tablespoons per gallon or two fluid ounces per gallon. And I think I'm gonna fill this up to about I guess we'll do oh, five or six gallons, maybe. spray the spinosad on the apple tree now. Uh, good news is there's really not much of a breeze today. Maybe just a little bit so that'll keep the overspray at a minimum but I'm gonna keep my camera pretty far back here uh, while I'm spraying this tree. I spray surround on here. This is uh, the peach tree and this is about the size of the fruit. I actually like them a little bit smaller than that when I first start spraying but this has been such a crazy spring. It's been so cold um, and these things just like burst out very quickly and they're growing very quickly now. But anyway I'm going to want to get good coverage on all of this fruit. And when it still has this husk on here, it's kind of hard to get the coverage that you want. 
but we're going to do our best. It's a little peach. Show you the cherries too. This is the sour cherry tree. You can see right there, that's a cherry. And again, this is probably a little bit larger than I'd like before I spray. Cherries grow very quickly. These will be, well, we'll start harvesting these probably in, within a month. There's some more here. We have so many left over from last year still in the freezer. This is the sweet cherry. You can see the little fruit there. See that one there, that's pretty big. If there was a coculia around, it would definitely want to be hitting that and putting eggs in it. We got lots of sweet cherries. Okay, here we go. Here was some coculio damage right on this one already. Let me get this out in the sun. So they are present. Hopefully that shows up. There's that little crescent shaped scar there and that's a couple days old. It's already turning brown so there's an egg underneath that skin there. So we're going to destroy this. Hopefully they haven't gotten to a lot. There's another one right there. Hmm. They're going after the, the larger fruit. These are okay. Now if I beat on this tree, Coculios that are on the branches would fall down to the ground just by tapping on it like that. They usually fall to the ground. And they don't like to fly. They can fly, or so I've been told. They don't like to fly. So what they'll do is they'll try to crawl back, crawl back up the trunk of the tree and we're going to coat the trunk too with surround anyway let's get started on this thing I'd like to get some cherries this year I'm going to have to do everything from the tripod here because this stuff is really messy. So I made a picture with some measurements on it to 14 cups. And the reason I did that is because that's like basically one gallon of water to 14 cups of surround for the initial dosage that I spray on the trees. It is a lot, but you want to get good coverage. And then subsequent times that you spray the tree, it sticks better and you don't need as much. What we're gonna do first is fill this tank with water. very affected by static electricity too, so it clumps and sticks to everything. It has no odor. And, I mean, if you're around a lot, you probably should wear a respirator when you're breathing the dust. I'm holding my breath. Four to five of 
five cups will do it. Also, sometimes I'll add like a little squirt of uh, dish detergent or insecticidal soap. That also helps cut the wax on the leaves and the fruit so that it sticks better. Uh, I don't have any insecticidal soap right now, so I'm going to have to... Uh, I'll probably get some dish detergent, just put a little bit in there. So that's basically one cup per gallon right there. So we're going to do this probably three more times. All right, I'm going to start the motor up and get it circulating and see how the liquid looks. Sunglasses. Not sure you can see that. It's a splatter. That's what my shoes look like. I try to be really careful. I try to be really careful and get the uh, overspray to not come towards me or on top of me, but this is the result. Usually my tractor's covered. I did pretty good today. Of course, the wind wasn't blowing much until we did the cherry tree. Um, you can see this. It leaked out of there a little bit. 
just runs down and dries up. That's what you want to get, a coating like that on the fruit and on the branches. I think even if it's not on the fruit completely, once it's in the branches, if it's that good, when they're going from fruit to fruit, they hate that stuff and they'll leave the, the tree. So I went through just about the entire 14 gallons and uh, that was three trees. I still have to do the apple tree. I'm not going to do the other apple tree because I got to do some trimming on it and I don't really care. Um, but I'm going to check back with those trees in a couple hours and see what the covers look and see if I have to do it again. Um, but I've got to run for a bit. Before I wrap it up for now, I just wanted to make a quick point. It is May the 9th and uh, usually I'm spraying by mid-April. Um, the argument could be made that I probably should have started this about a week ago, but it's been such a late season for everything. Um, yeah, it's, and I also go through a lot more surround because the curculios, they will be active at least in this area until like the first or second week of June. And then after that, you really don't have to worry about them. Then you just have to worry about other pests if you want to continue spraying your trees. Um, I usually stop and uh, I have some damage from various things, but usually uh, very little damage at all um, beyond that. Uh, the surround also does protect the fruit from like sun damage and things like that. Uh, and you do get better looking fruit. Um, the, the quicker you stop spraying, the less you have to wipe off when you harvest. Um, usually our apples, which we pick in August on that, uh, the Macintosh apple tree, um, it, there's some left in the, the ends of the apple and at the top, but really hardly any on the outside of the apple um, if I stop spraying in June. Um, so that's all right. The peaches are harder to get the stuff off of. Uh, the cherries, uh, once you rinse them off, they're good. Oh, and by the way, you, you can ingest this stuff. It won't hurt you. At least that's what I've been told. <laughs> and I've read the stuff is uh, in kaopectate. Uh, so it's, it's basically the same stuff. Um, I think it's kaopectate. Yeah, kaopectate. It's like kao. I think they got the name from kaoline clay, so kaopectate, it's same stuff, so you're basically eating it. Um, so it might uh, harden up your stool if you eat a lot of it, I guess, um, but uh, I don't think it'll cause any damage. Uh, everything in there is inert and, and not harmful. Um, and the same goes for bees and flies and things like that. It doesn't seem to affect them. As a matter of fact, while I was down there spraying, the, there was a, a bumblebee that kept trying to uh, to land um, on the tree. <laughs> I was trying to avoid hitting them. And you can see down there right now, There, I just sprayed like five minutes ago and there's birds already down there under the trees. Um, they're probably picking up stuff that I knocked off, little, hopefully, curculios, and they're eating them. Um, but I wanted to do a time lapse on the tree so you could see them turning white, but I just didn't have enough time to do it today. Um, today's a work day and I've, I'm rushing around to, to get all this stuff done. In the spring, it's just so many things that have to get done. My lawn looks like crap. The garden isn't even started. I'm going to have to buy plants again today, or again this year. The pool needs some serious work to it. We're thinking about tearing down that this year. And of course, we're working on our, our bathroom remodel. Um, so it's just been one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. And uh, so yeah. Oh, and another thing, this plum tree, it's still alive, but it's heavily inf uh, messed up with that fungus. Um, it's destroyed the branches, so I'm, I, hopefully I'm going to cut that down soon. Um, and then those two stumps from the other plum tree and that other peach tree, I'm going to try to dig those up as soon as I get a chance. And then we'll plant another tree. I think I'm going to do another apple tree. And then... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do beyond that, but I got. I definitely got to put another two trees in there. Um, so, all right, be back in a bit. Okay, so I had to wait till the next day to film. Um, and walking down to my trees, I can already tell I'm definitely going to need to put more surround on. Yesterday, I did not use any soap in the mixture because uh, I wanted to see how it would turn out. And uh, definitely looks like I'm going to need to spray more you can see the fruit there's really not a whole lot of coating on that just like little specks it's not enough
as much around as it was in that mixture, you would think it would coat it completely. Now these actually have pretty good coating. Let me peel off this husk. You can see the difference right there between where it hit and where it didn't. That's the kind of coating you're looking for right there. Doesn't want to focus. Let's go take a look at the cherry trees. Yeah, see it's really spotty on the cherries. That's not going to do it. It's supposed to rain today and it's like a line of showers coming through. It's going to wash some of this off and then I'm going to have to come back and hit it again pretty hard. I'm going away this weekend so that's going to be a problem. I might not be able to spray until Sunday again. There could be a lot of damage by then if this doesn't deter them enough. I definitely get much better coverage when I use insecticidal soap in the mixture. Most definitely. There's nothing on that cherry right there. That's Kirkulio damage right there. this video up. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description to a fellow YouTuber. His channel's name is Vino Farm and he does beekeeping and he's got a bunch of apple trees that he's trying to get apples off of and he hasn't had any success because of the plum curculio but uh, he contacted me last year asking me about the surround and uh, he's going to try it this year. He's got himself a sprayer and uh, he just bought the surround and I guess in the next couple weeks he's going to be spraying his trees. So uh, be sure to check that channel out. Thanks a lot guys, I appreciate it. Have a great day.